Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited today to be posting for the first time over on the Birch Press Designs blog. I am so excited to be on the team and that is linked in the description if you're interested in going to see the post. Right now I'm going to just go through and show you all of the different shadow die or shadow word dies that I have from Birch Press Designs. I'm showing you this because I want to show you that you can use this technique really on any shadow word die that you have. But today specifically, I'll be using the Simple Love Shadow Die Set, as well as the Lingo That Thanks Clear Stamp Set. For my inks today, I'm going to be using Limoncello, Mandarin Spice, Party Dress, and Flirty Fuchsia. And the technique that I'm going to be showing today is just a pad to paper or ink pad to paper ink blending. I wanted to show that you could really personalize these designs and really stretch the uses of your word dies. My entire card today is going to be a word die design and I'm going to show you how I do that now. So as you can see, I'm going in a pattern of sort of darkest to lightest and I'm just taking an end of an ink pad and placing it directly on my cardstock and pushing down a little bit. You can see obviously the blend is not seamless or really any at all but for this technique it's almost better because it's going to be a more vibrant change and you're going to see it a lot easier in the shadow die. I'm going to go ahead and place my shadow die right onto that ink blend. And the vibrancy that you get from pad to paper is just something that you can't from traditional ink blending with the round blenders or even with the blending brushes that are new now on the market. And I'll pull this up and you can see, I get that really cool blend. It's not perfect, but you don't see it as rough as you do on the paper. And it's a really nice transition. I'm now just showing that the negative, if you add that little O center, can be used as well if you cut that down to a card. So you can actually get even more from this die. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and just go through all of the different combinations quickly. But if you're interested in all of the color combinations that I used, they are in the description. I just wanted to go quickly and mention that in the beginning you may have seen that I placed my word die or my shadow die down first and that was just to see the length of it, just to see the sort of width that I had to cover for the ink blending. I also want to make sure when I put my shadow die down that I'm getting some of each color so I want to make sure it spans across that entire ink blended area. I'm now going to go ahead with the remaining of the white cardstock and cut out the actual word die four times. This particular word die cuts each letter out individually. So it's not L-O-V-E together. It cuts out an L, it cuts out an O, it cuts out a V, and then it cuts out an E. So since I'm doing this four times, I have a lot of letters, but I can easily put them on there and I'll show you in just a minute. There are actual grooves in the shadow dies that show you exactly where each letter would go. Not that you wouldn't know which letter goes where, but it's tough to get it right in the center sometimes. So here I am going ahead and showing and it's kind of hard to see, but if you look, you can see the guide and where it goes and it kind of outlines it for you. I am using uh, Tombow Multi, Tombow Mono Multi Glue for this. I do recommend something else with a little bit of a finer tip for a very fine uh, dispension. <laughs> um, I just, mine was very clogged, so I had to boil water and put it in and do all that fun stuff. So this worked for the time being, but I would normally use a much finer tip with a, a glue that dries clear or matte, and that way you won't be able to see it. So I'm now just wrapping up putting all 16 letters on the four shadow dies, and then I'm going to go ahead and start my card front. I'm using the memory box wrapped stitched rectangles in the largest size, which is an A2 four and a quarter by five and a half size die. And this will just add a little bit of interest since I'm just using a white cardstock, and it gives a really fun border with some stitched uh, rectangles that are a little bit wonky and I thought it added just a little bit of whimsy to the card. 
I'm going to use foam tape to adhere all of my word dies to my card front and I have to put them pretty close together so that they all fit there on the A2 size card front. For the actual sentiment, I am using the You're In My Heart sentiment stamp from the Lingo Thanks Clear Stamp Set, and I'm going to heat emboss that onto black cardstock. I'm also going to just trim that down really thin and place it right there on the second of the top, or second from the top. And you can see I finished this card. I just wanted to show you here that it is 3D. This is just a card front. It's not adhered to a card base yet, but uh, those are popping up a bit from the foam tape and then I just went ahead with glue and adhered the you're in my heart sentiment. This is the completed card. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about this technique. I absolutely love it because it lets me stretch my supplies and I don't have to use the word die just as a sentiment. I can use it as a design. Again, the blog post that coordinates with this is linked in the description as well as all of the products used today. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.